Hey y'all, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Stephanie and I appreciate y'all stopping by. Today's video is going to be the last official Christmas video for this year. Most of these DIYs are geared more towards Christmas, but the little tray can be used all through the winter season. I'm a bit under the weather today, so I apologize in advance for my voice. I hope y'all enjoy the video, and if you do, please give it a thumbs up and be sure to hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. Let's go ahead and jump into the first DIY. For this first project, I used one of these 11 by 14 wood panels from the plus section at Dollar Tree. I started by painting the entire panel front and back with two coats of Krylon chalky finish paint in the color Classic White. You could use this Let It Snow stencil pack from Hobby Lobby, but I decided to use this Let It Snow design that I found on Cricut Design Space and cut out in matte black vinyl. Once the paint on the panel was completely dry, I applied the vinyl to the center of the panel on the side with the raised edges to create the bottom of the tray. Next, I used two of these black metal handles and some decorative black screws that I got on sale at Hobby Lobby. I placed one of the handles on each side of the tray and made sure that they were even, then took a pencil and marked where each of the screws went so that I could make sure I kept them even when attaching them to the sides of the tray. Then I took two of the screws and started one in each of the holes on one side of the tray. I screwed them in just enough to hold them in place. Once I had both screws started and the handle straight, I went ahead and screwed both screws snugly into place. You could use a small drill bit to pre-drill the holes for the screws to make it easier, but this panel is made out of a soft enough wood that I didn't have a bit of trouble with the screws. I then repeated these steps to attach the other handle to the other side of the tray, and this quick and easy tray is finished. I love how this tray turned out. It's very neutral, so it will fit easily in with the rest of my Christmas and winter decor. Moving right along to DIY number two. For this project, I used this 15.3 inch wooden round tray from a pack with three different sizes that I picked up on sale at Hobby Lobby. I used Krylon Chalky Finish Antiquing Wax in the color Dark Vintage to stain just the bottom of the tray. Next, I used Krylon Chalky Finish Paint in the color Classic White and gave the sides and back of the tray two good coats. Then, I took this wooden Merry Christmas decor piece that I picked up on sale at Hobby Lobby and removed the twine hanger. I used Waverly Chalk Paint in the color Crimson to paint just the front of the sign. Once all the paint was dry, I put some wood glue on the back of the Merry Christmas sign and placed it in the center of the wooden tray. I do want to mention I did go back with a wet paper towel and clean up around the sign where any wood glue squished out from under it. When I was happy with the placement of the sign, I set a few heavy bottles of paint on top to help hold it in place and set it aside to dry for a few hours. While I waited on the glue to set up, I painted 24 large wooden beads from Amazon with two coats of Krylon Chalky Finish Paint in the color Classic White. After I had all the beads painted and they were dry, I placed a large upholstery needle on the end of some twine and strung all the beads to create a hanger for the sign. Once I had all the beads on the twine, I tied a double knot in each end to secure the beads onto the twine and cut off the excess twine. When the glue on the sign was dry, I flipped the tray over and used hot glue to attach the string of beads to the top back side of the tray. I also went back after the glue set up and applied a generous layer of glue over the top of the twine on the back side of the sign for added security. I took two of these berry and eucalyptus picks from Walmart and cut them apart to decorate the bottom of the sign. I started by laying down the two pieces of eucalyptus facing in opposite directions on the bottom of the sign and used hot glue to hold them in place. Next, I took the greenery from the pick and placed it on top of the eucalyptus and secured it in place with hot glue. Then, I took the red berries and placed them on top of the greenery and hot glued them in place. To finish off this project, I took a flocked pine cone that I had in my stash and hot glued it to the very center of the florals and this one is finished. I think this turned out super cute and festive. I'm hanging it in my bedroom, but it would also make a fantastic door hanger to welcome guests to your home this Christmas. 
On to DIY number three. For this project, I started with two packs of these four by five canvas two packs that I got on sale at Hobby Lobby. I started by removing the rubber seal on the back side of all four canvases. I used a weeding tool to help fish out the edge of the seal and then used some pliers to pull it the rest of the way out. Next, I used a sharp utility knife and scored along the outside edges of the canvas on the back side of the frame so that I could easily remove the canvas fabric from the frame. Once I had the canvas removed, I used a pair of pliers to remove any leftover canvas on the back side of the frame. Then I took a flat-headed screwdriver and very carefully removed all the staples from the frame. Since these frames were only held together with staples, I had to use some wood glue and some hot glue to reassemble them. I was careful to put the hot glue only on areas where I had not put the wood glue because when these two glues mix, they deactivate each other and it turns into one big hot mess. Once I had all four frames reassembled, I took some wood filler and filled in all the holes and indentions left by the staples and set them aside to dry. Next, I took two packs of these 5x7 two-pack canvases from Hobby Lobby and repeated the same steps to prep the frames. After the wood filler was dry, I took a sanding sponge and sanded down all eight frames, front and back, so that they were nice and smooth. When I had all the small frames sanded down, I used hot glue to glue them together in the shape of a cube by gluing the short sides together so that the cube was short and chunky. I used hot glue to create a square using the larger frames by gluing the long sides together so that it was a bit taller and skinnier than the other frame. Once I had the frames put together, I used Waverly chalk paint in the color ink to paint both the cube and the square. Next, I used some of this gold mesh looking wired ribbon that I picked up on sale at Hobby Lobby. I put a thin line of glue on the edge of one of the canvas frames in the middle and hot glued the ribbon in place. I then wrapped the ribbon up and across the top of the present and attached it to the other side with more hot glue and trimmed off any excess ribbon. I then repeated this step to add another strip of ribbon across the other side of the present so that it would look like it had been wrapped. A little tip, if you're using the same ribbon as I did, you want to attach one end of the ribbon to the bottom of the square and then pull it tight across the top of the square and down to the other side so that it will lay flat and not look bunched up. To make the bow for the top of the present, I took some more of the gold ribbon and measured out how long I wanted my bow to be and doubled the ribbon over and cut it to size. I then took that piece of ribbon and used it to cut a second piece the same size. Next, I took the ribbon and applied a little bit of hot glue on the inside edge of one of the ribbon ends and attached the other end of the ribbon so that I had a circle. I repeated this step to create another circle with the second piece of ribbon. To put the bow on top, I flattened the first ribbon circle and used hot glue to attach it to the center of the top of the present. I then flattened out the other ribbon circle and hot glued it to the center of the bow going in the opposite direction of the first piece. Once the glue had set up, I fluffed up the bow pieces. I then repeated these steps to add the ribbon and bow to the smaller present and this project is finished. I really do love how these two turned out. I even decided to add a little LED flameless candle inside each of them for a little bit of an added glow. Moving on to DIY number four. For this project, I used one of these fill your own glass snow globes from the Target dollar spot. I started by taking the snow globe apart and painting the base with two coats of Rust-Oleum high gloss spray paint in the color black. Once the base was dry, I used a string of these LED lights from Dollar Tree and some faux snow that I had in my stash. I put a thin layer of the snow down in the bottom of the snow globe and then added a few of the lights. I then added another layer of the snow followed by more lights until I had the bottom of the snow globe filled with the snow and the lots. Next, I took this Father Christmas ornament from Walmart and cut off the jute hanger. I placed the figure right in the center of the bottom of the snow globe and replaced the top. I made sure the string to the light box was on the back side of the figure to the back of the snow globe so that it could easily be hidden and this one is finished. I am really happy with how this quick and easy snow globe turned out. I really wish the camera showed the beauty of it and the nice warm glow from the lights. Quickly moving on to DIY number five. 
For this next project, I used one of these 16 by 20 canvases from this two pack that I picked up in the plus section at Dollar Tree. I started by flipping over the canvas and using a sharp utility knife to cut along the outside edge of the canvas frame so that I could remove the canvas from the frame to create a reverse canvas. Once I had the canvas removed from the frame, I used a pair of pliers to remove all the leftover pieces of the canvas. Next, I took a flathead screwdriver and some pliers and very carefully removed all the staples from the back and the front side of the frame. After I had all the staples removed, I took some Krylon chalky finished paint in the color Classic White and painted the front and sides of the frame with two good coats. I flattened out the canvas fabric and took a 10 and a half inch plastic plate from Walmart and placed it in the center of the canvas using the creases from where the canvas was attached to the frame as a guide. I used apple barrel paint in the color cloudless and a foam pouncer brush to paint around the outside of the plate while holding the plate in place so that I would have a perfect white circle. Next, I used apple barrel paint in the color bright blue and the same sponge brush with the light blue paint still on it and painted the rest of the front of the canvas again holding the plate in place. I went back in with some more of the cloudless blue paint and went back around the plate followed up with some more of the bright blue to blend the two colors together all while the paint was still wet. I decided I wanted the background blue to be a bit darker so I went ahead and mixed a little bit of the apple barrel paint in the color black with some apple barrel bright blue paint and using the same sponge brush I had been using painted the entire front of the canvas except for right around the plate since I wanted the lighter blues to show. Once I had the dark blue all over the canvas I went back in with some more of the bright blue and painted it all over the dark blue to blend it together. Next, I used some white acrylic paint and a stencil brush from Dollar Tree to create the stars in the night sky. I dipped the stencil brush into the white paint and used my finger to flick the paint all over the front of the canvas with the plate still in place to protect the moon. Once I had the stars in the sky, I carefully removed the plate to reveal the moon. To clean up around the moon and to make it look like it was shining, I took a small paintbrush and went around the inside edges with the cloudless light blue color and then around the outside of that with a bright blue. Here is how it looked once all the paint was dry on the canvas. After all the paint was completely dry, I placed the frame on top of the canvas using the original creases as a guide and used hot glue to tack it in place on each of the four corners. I then flipped the whole thing over and used a staple gun to secure the canvas all along the back side of the frame. Once I had the frame in place, I took a sharp utility knife and carefully cut off the excess canvas fabric from around the outside of the frame. I created this Santa and his reindeer SVG and cut it out in some matte black vinyl and applied it to the canvas angled at a waist so that it looked like he was flying across the moon. I will try to leave a link to this SVG file in the description box below, but I know there are similar ones on the design space ready to use. Now if you don't have a vinyl machine, you could print this out on regular printer paper and Mod Podge it onto the canvas or you could freehand it. I'm not an artist, so vinyl it was for me. For the hanger, I used one of these sawtooth hangers from a picture hanging kit that I picked up at Dollar Tree. I centered the hanger on the back of the frame and hammered the little nails into place, trying to keep it as straight as possible. At this point, I decided it needed a little something extra, so I texted a picture to my sister, who happens to be a very good artist, and asked her opinion, and she said to stipple the moon a little bit. So I took some folk art medium gray and some white acrylic paint along with a Dollar Tree stencil brush and stippled the moon. I'll admit I had no idea what I was doing here, but I just worked back and forth adding in some gray and some white and mixing the two together until I was happy with the way it looked. If I happened to get a little bit of paint on the vinyl, it was easy to wipe away with the damp baby wipe. Here is how it turned out when I was finished with it. I absolutely love this one. It's hands down my favorite out of all of today's projects. And if I'm honest, probably out of all the Christmas DIYs I've done in the last two years here on my channel. Last but not least, DIY number six. 
For this final project, I used eight of these 8x10 canvases from this 12-pack that I picked up at Hobby Lobby. I actually prefer the quality and look of the Hobby Lobby canvas frames over Dollar Tree, but you could use Dollar Tree frames as well. I started by removing the canvas fabric and staples from all eight frames just like I did in the previous projects on this video. Next, I took some sandpaper and sanded off the number stamp on the inside of the frames. Since I was staining these, I did not want the ink to show through the stain. Once I had all the frames prepped, I took four frames that fit together nicely to form the shape of a window and used wood glue and a small dab of hot glue to attach all four frames together and set them aside to dry. I did go ahead and clean up any of the wood glue that squished out around the edges of the frames with a damp baby wipe. After the wood glue had a couple of hours to set up, I did flip the frame over and reinforce the back seams with a generous amount of hot glue for a bit of added security. When all the glue had time to dry, I took some stainable wood filler and filled in the gaps between the four frames on the front so that it looked like one solid piece. Once the wood filler was completely dry, I took some sandpaper and sanded the areas where I applied the wood filler so that it was nice and smooth. I then stained the front, back, and sides of the window frame as well as the front, back, and sides of the other four frames with Rust-Oleum wood stain in the color American Walnut. Next, I used four 8x10 picture frames from Dollar Tree and removed the glass since I only wanted to use the glass for this project. I used this ice crystal spray that I picked up at Walmart and sprayed just the front sides of the glass with one light coat. I did clean the glass with some rubbing alcohol and let them completely dry before spraying them. It takes about 30 minutes for these ice crystals to form, but I'm impatient, so I went ahead and used my heat tool and they were dry in no time, but just to be safe, I let them set overnight. I flipped the window frame over and used some E6000 to attach the glass face side down with the side that I sprayed the crystals on facing down to the back of the frame. Once I had the glass in place, I applied more E6000 around the edges of the glass and placed one of the other frames down on top with the flat back touching the glass. I made sure to try and get the glass and frame lined up as best I could with the frame on the window. These frames are not perfect, so they may be a little crooked, but it's nothing too noticeable. I then repeated these steps to add the glass and frames to the other three windows and then set some heavy objects on top and set them aside to dry for a couple of hours. While the window was drying, I took one of these folding wooden Christmas scenes that I picked up on sale at Hobby Lobby and removed all four hinges so that I would have three individual pieces. Next, I took some Krylon chalky finish paint in the color Classic White and painted all the trees front and back on all three pieces and the rooftop of the little cabin. Then I took Waverly chalk paint in the color Hazelnut and painted the front and back of both of the deer on the smallest piece. I used Waverly chalk paint in the color Crimson to paint the front and back of the little cabin. I then used Waverly chalk paint in the color ink to paint Santa and his reindeer and the little chimney on the cabin, although now I wish I'd painted Santa and his reindeer white so that they would show up a bit better. Once I had everything painted, I took an extra canvas frame and used it to measure where I needed to cut the piece with Santa so that it would fit in the upper pane on the window and marked it with a pencil. I then took a ruler and a sharp utility knife and scored the wood along the line so that I could snap off the excess. After I had the piece cut to size, I took some sandpaper and sanded the edge so that it was nice and smooth. I used one of these white microfiber cloths from Dollar Tree to add snow to the Christmas scene pieces. I started by cutting off the finished edges of the cloth. I then added a line of hot glue around the top and side of the small wood seam and placed the microfiber cloth on top of the glue and continued to add more glue around the edges until I had the whole front side covered with the cloth. These cloths have two sides. One is a little more fluffy than the other and that fluffy side is the side that I wanted to be showing as the snow. After I had the top and the sides glued into place, I cut off the excess cloth and hot glued the bottom and the other side down into place. I then flipped over the piece and cut off all the excess cloth so that it would have a nice clean finished look.
I repeated these steps to cover the bottom half of the other two wood pieces. Once the glue on the window frame was completely dry, I flipped it over so that I was working on the side where I had not sprayed the crystals. You can tell the difference by the feel of the glass, which side is the front and which is the back. I laid out the three wood pieces face down on the back side of the window on the three frames I wanted them to be visible on and used hot glue to secure them in place. You could use E6000 or wood glue for this step if you wanted a more secure hold, but the hot glue seems to be holding up really well. Once all the wood pieces were glued into place, this window frame is finished. I wanted to keep it simple, but if you wanted, you could add fairy lights or maybe even some greenery or florals on the top. I also did not add a hanger because this will be sitting on my entryway table, but you could add one to the back if you wanted to hang it up. I am absolutely thrilled with how this one turned out. I really do love it. It did take some time waiting on the glues to dry, but it was so worth it. Here is one final look at all six of today's projects. I absolutely love how these turned out. Which one of these projects is your favorite? Let me know in the comments below. Mine has to be the Santa canvas. Also, let me know in the comments what you want to see next. Like, do you want me to keep doing winter or would you like me to go to Valentine's or would you like me to do just regular everyday decor? I want to know. Let me know. I want to thank each and every one of y'all for stopping by today, and if you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. It really does help me out here on YouTube, and if you haven't hit that subscribe button yet, what are you waiting for? Click that button and stick around for a little while. I have tons of fun projects on the way. Also, I just want to apologize again about my voice. Like I said, I'm a little under the weather, but hopefully I'll get to feeling better soon, and I'll have another video for y'all on the 13th, so be sure to come back and check it out. I'll see y'all next time.